Hello, my friends, and welcome back to another sticky situation. Here we have a bunch of mean-looking aliens, and I have no way out. What can I do? There's nowhere to go, nowhere to hide. If only I had a way to use some moves and get out of this situation. Hello, my friends, and allow me to introduce you to Eruptile. This is a Nokadon. This was designed by Bombarage, who I am coordinating with, and we are kind of tag-teaming making this Garagemon adventure for you guys. I hope you enjoy the 3D modeled awesomeness that is Eruptile. His movements are so cool, and then when you add in the moves on top of it, it's just amazing what can be done in tandem, and I can't wait to show you guys how you can make some awesome moves for your games as well. In order to make an effective move set, we must understand that there are four different elements of making moves in Game Builder Garage. The first is effects, then damage, special effects, and movement. Effects are going to be the things like lights, smoke, and other things from the effect nodons that give it that nice pristine shine. For damage, how much is it going to hurt? Will it be a one hit destruction or will it add up over time when you're using a counter nodon to make it eventually destroyed? Also, how wide, how long, and how much is our radius for the damage going to be? And in what pattern are you going to do it? Straight line or circle? You have to think about these things on giving damage as well. Special effects. You can give it a speed boost, a jump boost, damage increase. Basically, these are the buffs that you can add with certain moves. <sighs> Lastly, we're going to be using movement. That's jumping, sliding, kicking, celebrating, any of the actions that come with the characters, as well as teleportation. When you put some of these together, then you can really create something special. Today, we'll be doing four different moves. Each one of these has different combinations of the move sets, and they're going to be useful for different things. The first move up is Poison Potion. This is a short-ranged attack that can attack very quickly. However, it's much weaker than the other moves. This one is good for destroying big enemies over time as it can drain enemies' health and eventually take them out. To create the Poison Potion, we just need a button and we're connecting that to a sound effect as well as a Launch 100 sphere and we have a purple texture to create the poison effect. In the settings, we have it destructible, destructive, and movable. You can have it destructive so it can destroy the smaller enemies. We have it going out the Z-. minus. You'll have to find wherever the mouth node on is for your 3D model and have it shoot out the mouth. We have a launch interval of 0.10, which is as short as possible, as well as a launch speed of 10 to give it that liquid looking effect. You don't really need it to be destructible if you're going to use teleporters, which I highly suggest. I'll show you guys why. There's a really cool effect you can do with teleporters and touch sensors. When we shoot it on this guy, you can notice that it's kind of absorbing into him, just like a poison would. This effect is created by having a touch sensor and a teleport entrance with no exit connected to the enemy. I like to stack them on top of each other just to keep things clean. This move could definitely be used to make some really cool boss fights, especially if your enemies are moving around while you try to shoot and avoid at the same time. If Poison Potion is proving ineffective, we need to make a quick getaway. We can use the next move, Stealth Smoke, to get away very quickly and in a shroud of smoke. In order to make this move effective, I made it double the speed of our character but it also obscures our vision to add balance. Balance is what makes moves truly great, so think about it whenever you're building your own moveset. In order to create the stealth smoke, I just have a simple button connected to an effect nodon. Make sure that the effect nodon has the location of the world. I have it connected center to Y+, plus, so it'll look like it's coming from his head, which is where I connected it. And then I made it fairly sizable so that it made a big smoke screen just to add the balance for the player, not to overuse it. In order to make the player want to use this, I took the same button with the smoke screen, multiplied it by two, and sent it through a wormhole. On my character note on, I have the up and down connected to forward and backward, and then I have left and right connected left and right. All I did was put two more multiplication node ons and I multiplied them by the wormhole entrance, so times two. And this makes it so when they're pressing the A button, it will move twice as fast. Also remember, your base speed must be less than or equal to one, because no matter how many multipliers you add, you can't get a character to move beyond two. So keep that in mind. If you're not really into running away, then the next move is for you. Here we have Volcano Tail, which is an extremely effective move when you find yourself surrounded. 
all you have to do is move it around and you can quickly make a circle of fire which will protect you from your enemies. In order to make the volcano tail, there are five separate launch 10 object launchers used. The settings for the launch 10 objects launchers are all the same except for the launch direction. We have the launch interval of 0 0.10, launch speed of 3. You can adjust these if you're making something similar. However, the launch directions all go different ways to give it that volcano or fountain effect, which makes it really cool. And of course, the color is red. When you connect all five of these to the button you want to launch, as well as a sound effect with lava, it's really, really fun. Let's take a listen. The final move is known as Fire Leap. Eruptile erupts into the air and unleashes devastating flames to the enemies that attack from above. If this one lands, it's a one-hit KO every time. In order to create the Fire Leap, we have the button we use to activate it connected to a timer. This timer continues the output for one second to allow the flames to continue that long. And then we have it hooked up to an explosion effect as well as a wormhole. This wormhole is coming out and entering a destroy object node on, which I have set for some of the fancy objects I would use to fall on the player. We have that connected directly to the person. Make sure whatever you're using for your enemy is also set to destructible by the destroy object node on. The situation hasn't gotten any better, but thankfully I remember my master's training and I know what to do. There you have it, my friends. Four different kinds of moves for this first move set. I hope you enjoyed them all. Comment down below which one was your favorite. And until next time, happy building and God bless.